हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल विश ऑल ऑफ यू अ वेरी गुड डे एंड फॉर ऑल आवर फ्रेंड्स हु आर सेलिंग ऑन बोर्ड विश यू काम सीज एंड अ सेफ सेलिंग आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू हैड अ चांस टू व्यू माय फर्स्ट वीडियो प्लीज प्रोवाइड मी योर यूजफुल इनपुट्स एंड फीडबैक फॉर द बेटरमेंट ऑफ द अपकमिंग वीडियोज With our video today, I wanted to start a series, which could be very very useful for all our young friends who are starting their career in the shipping industry. However, I think even our senior staff can find some import important information in this video. In our next few upcoming videos, we will try. to take a deep dive into the ships certificates and explore the contents of the certificates as all of you know for continuing the operations of the vessel the ship requires to have a set of certificates these certificates can be broadly classified into two classes statutory certificates these are the certificates which are issued by the flag administration or a recognized organization on behalf of the flag administration the other set of certificates include trading certificates and also a certificate of class for our first video we will discuss the certificate of class In this slide you can also see a few terms like full time full term certificate short term certificate conditional certificate interim certificate etc a lot of data is available about these terms on the textbooks or on the internet so i encourage all our young friends to have a quick read about these terms next let us try to have a look at the certificate of class on your screen you can see that on the certificate of class i have marked a few numbers like 1 2 3 if you see the section marked number 1 this contains the basic data of the vessel like the name of the ship the flag state the call sign the place of building or the yard of building of the ship the details of the owners of the vessel the ship's basic dimensions like length breadth depth its gross tonnage net tonnage and also the power of the main engine fitted on the ship if you come to section number 2 and 3 this is where we have the class notations now this is a very interesting topic of discussion and we will deep dive into this today class notations may be defined as symbols numbers alphabets or a combination of these which are assigned to a ship by the class society signifying that the ship follows or complies with a certain part of the class rules we will try to understand these with examples the class notations can broadly be classified into four categories the ship's main construction notation ship's service notation navigational notation and additional class notation we will see each of these in the following slides in this slide we can see the examples of a few notations that have been assigned to different ships for example you can see in the first one a c then there is a cross mark with an underline container ship unrestricted navigation then below we have aut ums 
dangerous goods and in water survey. Similarly, in the second one and the third one, you can see a C dot hull dot machinery Y and so on. We will try to understand each of these. Let us start with the main class notation. So all of you know that normally ships are built as per the rules and regulations of class societies. However, ships may also be built as per other rules or guidelines. For example, small domestic trading vessels may be designed and built as per domestic or national requirements. Alternatively, ships may be built as per ISO requirements. In the certificate of class, the notation C means that the ship's hull or machinery are built as per class rules or other standards which are equivalent to class or acceptable by the class society. So we see that there are two alternatives, either built as per class rules or as per other standards acceptable to class. If a class ship is built as per class rules, then the notation that is given to the ship is a cross. And if a ship is built as per other acceptable standards, the notation given to the ship is a dot as we can see in the picture. Let us assume a ship was is built under the rules of Lloyd Register. And after building, the ship is also operated under Lloyd's Register. Then for this ship, the symbol given is a cross. However, in future, if the class of the ship is changed to say DNV, then when DNV issues the new certificate of class, the symbol assigned to this ship would be a class with a dash below it. So a cross means the ship is built as per the rules of the current class society. And a cross under star means the ship is built as per the rules of a class society, which is not the current class society of the ship. Also, when the ship is built, based on the request for the owners, it might happen that the hull of the ship is built as per the class rules, but the machineries that are fitted inside the ship follow some other alternative standards. In this case, what will happen is the ship will be assigned the notation hull, cross and machinery dot. In another example, if both the hull and the machinery are built as per class rules, then there would be no hull and machinery differently mentioned in the class certificate and the sign cross would be assigned universally to the ship. Alternatively, if both the hull and the machinery are built as per some alternative standards, then the symbol dot will be assigned universally to the ship. Here in this slide, I have presented the different combinations for your quick understanding. Please pause the video here and have a look at the slide and try to understand the meaning of the different symbols. Next, let us try to understand the navigational notation. Let's say a ship is built for only navigating in the coastal rivers or coastal seas. This ship need not be built with the strength that is required for a ship that is ocean going. 
So a ocean going ship has to be built much stronger than a river going ship. Hence, this list navigational notations are assigned to the ship based on the hull strength and of course the propulsion capacity to signify the area of the world where it can trade. So if a ship is given unrestricted navigation, it means the ship can sail anywhere in the world, of course, barring the polar regions. If it is given a notation of a summer zone, then it can operate in the summer zone as defined by the load line convention. Similarly, tropical zone, coastal area, sheltered water, etc. Next, we come to service notations. So, as you can see in the screen, it can be things like chemical tanker, bulk carrier, car carrier, etc., which signifies the service the ship is intended for. And in the second list, you can see additional class notations. These are the notations which are given to the ship when they comply with a certain class requirement. For example, a ship that has UMS operation in engine room can be assigned AUT UMS. If the sh ship is designed for battery powered operation, it can be given battery powered operation. And similarly, the list goes on and on. Normally, every class would have maybe 100 or more than 100 additional notations and these will be assigned to ships based on how they are uh, designed. This brings us back to the original example page which I had shown. I think now it will be a little more clearer as to how the notations work. So in the first example, we can see C cross underline, which means this ship is designed as per standards which are of the class of other class that is if the current class is dnv then it is not built as per dnv rules but maybe as per lloyd rules or any other class society rules this is a container ship which is the service notation it is unrestricted navigation and in the additional notation, you can see it is a UMS ship. It is permitted to carry dangerous goods. And also it is allowed to do in water survey, which can replace the two and a half yearly dry docking of the vessel. In the second example, you can see it's a C dot, which means the hull and the machinery of the ship has been designed as per alternate standards which are acceptable to class. YCH is a notation of a yacht, which is commercial yacht. And it is a short range navigation, which means it can probably uh, go up to 60 nautical miles or 20 nautical miles from the shore. In the third example, you can see C dot hull dot machinery Y. It means that the hull and the machinery, both of the ship is designed as per alternate standards. In the fourth example, it's a C cross hull dot machinery. It means the hull is designed as per the rules of the current class society, but the machinery is as per some alternate standards. And finally, coming to the last example, you can see it is a general cargo ship, double skin, equipped for carriage of containers and unrestricted, navi unrestricted navigation. Hope the concept of class notations is a little bit clear. Now coming to the next slide, you can see that normally for the class certificate, there is always a annual survey. So here you see that there are five annual surveys. The validity of the class certificate is for five years. And in this five years, there are five annual surveys that are carried out. 
Please bear in mind, if you open any statutory certificate, for example, a safety construction certificate or a safety equipment certificate, there would only be four annual surveys. But the class certificate has five annual surveys for five years. Then there would be a section for the intermediate survey, which would normally be done along with the bottom inspection of the vessel during the two and a half yearly dry docking period of the ship. And there is also a section for extension of the class certificate. For example, when the certificate of the ship expires, the ship is still sailing and is not able to reach the dry dock. In this condition, after satisfactory completion of the annual survey or any or an occasional survey to the satisfaction of the surveyor, the class period can be extended by three months to allow the ship to reach the next dry dock. And once the certificate expires, the full renewal survey is carried out along with the inspection of the ship's bottom and the inspection of the tail shaft and a new certificate of class is issued. This brings us to the end of our video today. Hope all of you have liked the video. In our next few upcoming videos, we will continue to explore more certificates. From the next video, we will start with the statutory certificates. Thank you so much once again for visiting my channel and watching my video. If you like the content, please like, share with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye. See you all of you in the next video.